morning. My name is Tara Owens. I, uh, I work for the University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program. And my program is actually based at UH Manoa on, uh, on Oahu, and, but I'm based here on Maui. So thank you for having me today. I'm humbled to be in a session with all these other dedicated conservation practitioners. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what it means to be extension faculty. I'm extension faculty with the University of Hawaii Sea Grant program and what that means and some of the activities we're involved in. So on the screen here, you're gonna see a picture of myself on the left-hand side and my coworker, Wes Kreil on the right-hand side. We both serve here on Maui, but there are a handful of us throughout the state um, in similar roles on the different islands. And there's a nationwide network of 34 programs like ours in coastal and Great Lakes states. Um, there's gonna be so much I leave out today. So please feel free to reach out afterwards or later to ask questions anytime. Okay, but first a question to you students. I think you're on mute, but anyway, you can shout it out in your classroom. Looking at the two images here, right and left, which future would you choose for Maui, right or left? Okay, you're unmuted now, right and left. Right. They say right. right. <laughs> uh, good job. Hey. Of course you would choose the right one, no pun intended, uh, the right one on the right hand side. Uh, where you see a nice, beautiful, natural beach that's buffering from coastal erosion and high waves. That seems like an easy choice, right? But decisions of the past have had mixed results, leading to both good outcomes and detrimental outcomes around our island. So we're going to need the next generation of coastal zone scientists and conservationists and managers like all of you to help us determine our future path. Very important. Okay, so in my current position, you heard me say I serve as extension faculty for the university. So you might not know this, but at the university, there are teaching faculty, mainly focused on teaching. There's research faculty, mainly focused on research. And there are extension faculty like me, and a lot fewer of us, um, that are meant to extend our services at the university out to the community. Plus, we do a little bit of teaching and a little bit of research. Uh, the extension faculty are essentially connectors to the community, making sure you see across the top there that there's interaction and feedback between what's happening at the university, the science and the research, and what is actually happening in the real world over on the right hand side with our community and our government. So we're in between there. Um, for me, in my particular role, I'm here on Maui as a partner to the county of Maui. So I just met Allison, and we're going to be working together, I'm sure, a lot more going forward because she's also at the county of Maui. But <clears throat> others at the county include there are specific planners that focus just on the shoreline and what happens there. And they have to make decisions on very complex challenges that have environmental, social, economic, and legal implications. So. We try to work together and with the community on all kinds of issues related to sea level rise, coastal erosion, coastal hazards, and make sure that science is integrated into the decision-making process. Uh, it works better sometimes than others. <laughs> okay, so I just wanna highlight some of our activities to show you how this works. Um, over the last several years, one of my program's main focus areas has been climate resilience with an initial emphasis on sea level rise. So we've worked with many, many, many partner organizations to support the development of cutting edge science-based information about exposure to sea level rise to support planning at state level, regional level, and down at the site specific level too. Um, this kind of information didn't even exist a few years ago. So it's a major breakthrough. We had a lot of legislative action at our state that led to this big report, this formative report, the Hawaii Sea Level Rise Vulnerability and Adaptation Report and the Hawaii Sea Level Rise Viewer. If you guys haven't had a chance to do go to the viewer yet, maybe that's something you do on your own time or in your class, hawaiiseelevelriseviewer.org. And you can zoom around to any location and, and see what impacts there might be. 
But the main thing is that our Maui County leaders were quick to embrace that information. And now they've taken steps to integrate that into all of the plans and policies that are coming out at the county. Community plans, vulnerability assessments, our policies, and our hazard mitigation plans. So that's a really big deal. Um, now, zooming out a little bit, I just will mention that in our state, it's really interesting. We lack what's considered to be like an integrated coastal zone management system. So what that means is that management of our shoreline is shared across several jurisdictions. So if you look at this graphic on the side, the county has authority over what happens seaward of the shoreline or seaward of the high wash of waves, but the state has authority, or sorry, landward of the high wash of waves. The state has authority seaward of that, and the federal government has authority seaward of even that. And so what that means is it's a complex system that requires a lot of coordination, and that's also one of my roles, to help coordinate and to make sure that state, county, federal agencies are are coordinated, and again, that science is part of permitting and planning decisions. You see over here on the right is a big pile of environmental assessments and permit applications that we have to work with all the time. And you may have seen coastal erosion is a widespread issue on Maui and worsening. There are several areas where there are now critical impacts to both the built environment and the natural environment. So these are just some images around Maui on all our shorelines, north, West Maui, South Maui. We're always out there doing site visits, reviewing sites, working with landowners, working with county and state stakeholders, and trying to identify short and long-term solutions. Sometimes those solutions are years in the making. This is one example that's happening right now, and, and it's unclear what the outcome will be, but we have a lot of condominiums like these ones on the left-hand side. You can see they're threatened by coastal erosion. Uh, there is a look at some possible options to do beach restoration, and there's a look at some new funding mechanisms to support these very expensive projects that can be in the tens of millions of dollars. Um, and so this is going to be an issue that's going on into the future and part of our conversations in the community. And I'm going to wrap up here. You saw that really serious issue on the last slide where condos are threatened, um, but our roads are threatened, homes are threatened, lots of infrastructure threatened. Our work on erosion mitigation often happens as a result of emergencies or crises. But one thing I get to do that I love the most that's very proactive is dune restoration. We have a very longstanding program of dune restoration on Maui, and we try to use this as a proactive way to keep our beaches healthy. A healthy and functioning dune ecosystem acts as a natural sand source and a solution to buffer against storms and high waves. And this is one area where actually students like yourself and your families can be involved. So we could talk more about that if there's interest. And lots of outreach, aside from what we do every day, we're proactive in this. We generally reach hundreds, sometimes thousands of folks each year through presentations and events and, and like in, in, in opportunities like this to reach out to you and your networks. So thank you for having me today. And I welcome your questions later on.